uh, this talk would be uh, application of light from methods mostly to the, yeah, to the five force theory. Yeah. Um, overview. First, uh, I will a little bit remind this light uh, front couple cluster methods and uh, application this to the five force theory. Uh, then uh, some light from Fox state expansion uh, results using symmetrical polynomial basis function. Um, also, we're talking about this difference between light front and equal time uh, critical coupling value. Uh, then um, some sector dependent uh, calculations result. And of course, some summary. <coughs> so, 5 4 theory, uh, just some quick reminder, of course, <laughs> Lagrangian for the light from uh, 1 plus 1 uh, uh, Hamiltonian uh, does not have this. Uh, yeah, for the 1 plus 1, there is no this kinetic term from the uh, transverse direction. So we have just mass term and uh, interaction term. Uh, for the light from x plus equals 0, mode expansion would be look like this. Uh, whereas, of course, this x minus is a slight con momentum, and p plus is a conjugate, conjugate uh, x minus is a <laughs> uh, longitudinal direction, and p plus is a light con momentum. And, and of course, uh, creation annihilation uh, operator commutator. Uh, for the Hamiltonian, we have these four terms, kinetic energy term, uh, 3 to 1, annihilation of three particles creating one particle term, uh, 1 to 3, annihilation of one creation of three, and of course, 2 to 2. <coughs> now, application of this LFCC to this uh, 5 4 theory. So, we have uh, this light from eigenvalue uh, problem whereas the light from Hamiltonian applying to this uh, eigenstate give us this mass squared e uh, expression. And with, without doing the Fox state truncation, we apply this ansatz. So whereas the state is really application of this uh, exponentiation of the operator T to this valence state, and these valence states usually include a uh, very small amount of particle. So for the phi 4, it would be really only, uh, because we will consider only uh, odd sector, it would be really only one uh, particle. It uh, differ from this really origin of this uh, couple cluster methods from the nuclear physics and nuclear chemistry, whereas really valence states are much larger and Really, for them, they did not create more particles, they just created excitations. And, uh, yeah, this operator T is conserved all required uh, quantum number, included light front momentum, and it's, of course, increases particle number. So, if we really multiply both uh, part of the eigenvalue problem by this, e to the minus t, we will obtain this baker hausdorff expression of the light from Hamiltonian on the left-hand side applied to the valence state. And on the right-hand side, uh, we have this expression and this guy really gain uh, eigenstate psi. So eigenvalue becomes uh, this effective light from Hamiltonian applied to the valence state. And so fr from both sides right now, we have the simple valence state. And now we do projections. Uh, we project this on the uh, valence state, this equation, uh, effective Hamiltonian. And we also project on the orthogonal to the valence state. And this uh, second so-called auxiliary equations will determine us operator t and that functions in the operator t uh, which is really yeah, showing distribution of the momentum. And how much we will truncate, we really, of course, will use truncation right now. Yeah? So 
up to this point everything exact, except of course a uh, higher uh, Fox state wave function connecting to the lower Fox uh, state function through the sum. Uh, as soon again, as soon as we do this truncation operator T, then this connection between a lower state and higher state becoming already just some special way, but it's still infinite amount of terms. But now we also truncate this uh, projection. So, for example, if the valence state would be one particle, yeah, for the FIFO theory, uh, here, this, if we keep infinite amount of term and we consider only odd sector, so it would be time three, five, seven, and so on. So, but because our real term, t, uh, we will truncate as as many as we need. So, if we have uh, I don't know, Tam five function in the T operator, we will truncate to the Tam three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Uh, we of course will do much just to the one equation. And uh, <coughs> yeah, this effective Hamiltonian could be calculated from this Baker Hausdorff expansion. And it would be, of course, we don't keep uh, infinite amount of term, we terminate this when this increase in the particle number matches the truncation of this projection. And uh, in the previous talk, yeah, we were talked about the spectator dependence and cancel divergences, but we don't have here. <laughs> okay, so the, for the five four application of LFCC, the valence state again it would be just one particle, one boson state, and uh, we take this simple contribution to the T operator, which is really one to three. So. Uh, annihilation of one particle creation of three, so it's really increase particle number by two, and it's exactly what we want for the lowest order because we wish, uh, we don't want to mix uh, odd and even sectors, and we really will consider odd sector. Uh, function, I'm sorry, function T2 uh, will be uh, symmetric in its argument, and this projection on this auxiliary state, this would be uh, truncated to just the uh, state of the three bosons. Because again, it should be odd sector and we only need one function, <coughs> so we truncate uh, to only one equation. Excuse me? Yes. So, so far you started with this light cone quantization and then you propose an answer for the vacuum, for the ground state. That's, that's what you've done, right? Uh, no, really, we, we wish not to do uh, a regular Fox space truncation. So we're still truncating, but we're truncating on the way how this uh, higher Fox state uh, connected to the lower Fox state. But we're still keeping infinite amount of the Fox. Uh, that's fine, but, but you decided, well, you, you started by deciding that you are quantizing your theory in the light form? Yes, of course, yeah, it's light form. Yeah. Sure, sure. But, but did you say why you wanted to do that? Because I'm trying to follow, you know, you, you can propose an answer for the vacuum then? But, well, it's, but, but it's not the vacuum, this is a massive state. The vacuum's trivial. <laughs> well, I keep hearing <laughs> that. I keep hearing that, but uh, is, is that, can you say something about that? Why is it trivial? In the light front? Yes. Because uh, uh, light front momentum, yeah? Uh, light front momentum, P plus, it's always positive. So we don't have, uh, we never have positive, uh, we ne never have negative momentum. So you cannot create vacuum from the, I don't know, plus five and minus five. Yeah, there is no such thing. It's always only zeros. So the, the vacuum is empty state and that's it? Yes. Of course, no, I mean. And now you're trying to populate it. So now you try to uh, obtain another. No, no, valence states, these five states, it's not vacuum state. It's just this uh, state with a minimum amount of particles. Right, but you are, this is an answer for what? You are trying to build a wave function? Yeah, we, we try to um, do phi 4 without Fox space truncation. But you're calculating a mass of states. Yes. Yeah. Not the vacuum. The vacuum is trivial. Yes, so yes, just yes, calculate yes, the yes, massive yeah. state. Yeah. So mm -hmm. okay. The one particle excitation. One particle excitation. Yeah. So, so 
you, the vacuum being trivial, you, you directly try to identify the excited states for pi 4. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, so, again, because we truncated this uh, projection only to the three state, uh, we uh, terminate this Baker-Hausdorff expansion for this uh, effective Hamiltonian. Also, <coughs> just to, yeah, just to one, one to three particles. Um, so, no, creation... Oh, yeah, we only keep these terms really who only create two particles, no more. And this is really more efficient way than instead to generate all these Baker-Hausdorff uh, expansion terms. Just right away, just to look what really, what terms we really need. Okay, so uh, how valence state uh, would look. So this uh, kinetic term from the Hamiltonian add to this uh, and this is projection on the valence state. Yeah, we will have only one particle state. So it's only two terms contribute, uh, kinetic energy and 3 to 1 and uh, T2 operator. This is again from the Baker-Hausdorff because this guy uh, minus two particles, and this is plus two particles, so just really direct uh, one to one. An auxiliary equation, uh, again, which is cut to the only three states, it has m many more terms, but point is that uh, every term just create two particles. Yeah, two particles here, nothing here, but these two particles here, again, nothing here, and so on. So we have really only two equations. Two equations for, for one function, or for this function, what is the unknown here? The T2 function. We don't know T2, we, we uh, extract T2 from this, this auxiliary equation exactly, no, to extract T, to find T2. Okay. And as soon as we know T2, yeah, we can uh, solve our eigenvalue problem. We know T2, we can find physical mass. Um, okay, so this is a valence state equation after integration. So we have this uh, T2 function from the T operator, and it's really uh, rescales. Again, th these guys is a fraction of the uh, longitudinal momentum. So we rescale this, and in order to express uh, integral in this fraction. And g is right now lambda o 4 pi mu squared, so it's depending on the bare mass. Yeah, mu is a bare mass, capital M is a physical mass. Uh, and this leads to the definition of this dimensional mass shift delta, which will be uh, talk about meaning of this shift later. Uh, and it's, of course, through this shift exactly, you also could say this mass renormalization is because it's physical mass, how physical mass connected with the bare mass. Okay, and this auxiliary equation, it has... Um, so. so again, this is from the one to three term. Uh, this is really wave function renormalization term. And this is from some diff other terms in the uh, Hamiltonian, again, from the Baker-Hausdorff uh, expression. And here we can see this nonlinearity, yeah, T2 tilde squared, no, second order in T2. So this is so-called uh, loop correction, so this is exactly coming from this infinite amount of fo Fox state here. Because if we really uh, expand this in the series, it would be infinite series over, uh, over coupling G, starting from the first order in G. So 
It's exactly how this LFCC methods implement uh, this correction from all high order state. Um, okay, and without in really showing result for this uh, light front couple cluster methods yet, uh, right away wish to talk about just to compare with this Fox state truncation where again we can see the odd sector and we just truncate up to three particles. So again we keep one particle and three particle states. Um, then if we apply this uh, light front eigenvalue problem, in the one plus one direction, then we will have, uh, in this case, only two, no, it would be coupled integral equation, depending on the how many uh, Fox state we keep in here. Here we have only two Fox states, so it would be only two equations. Um, and this is really, yeah, it's already expressed in the ratio of the Psi 3 and Psi 1. And we can right away see that this uh, definitely does not have loop correction in this uh, second equation, which is really coming from this three-body sector. It definitely does not have a uh, loop correction, which light from couple cluster has. So it's simpler. Do does not include physics from the higher state. And there's some uh, description of the structure of the equation. First is the same as a valence equation. So this is exactly the same as a valence state and LFCC. Uh, but auxiliary equation, it's for the LFCC, it's contained uh, five terms. Kinetic energy, two, 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 time wave function normalization, this vertical looks the most important. And in comparison, this Fox state truncation to up to three particles only, it has only three terms and does not have this <coughs> loops correction. Also, kinetic terms are not the same. In the LFCC, physical mass are, would be for all uh, constituents. But for this Fox state truncation uses bare mass in three body sector. Unless, of course, we apply the sector dependent normalization. And uh, I already told that, uh, of course, LFCC contains this vertex loops, which is partial resummation of all orders. Now, in order to solve uh, really both this Fox state truncated uh, eigenmelly problem and LFCC uh, equations, uh, we use these fully symmetrical polynomials. Uh, so they are this is multivariate polynomials of order n and x1 and x2. Their really domain is this uh, triangle for the three particle, yeah. And of course, because of the conservation of momentum, yeah, I remember that this x i's they are momentum fraction. So conservation of momentum, it means that they all sum to one. So we really have only two independent variables. Also, it could be more than one polynomial of the given order. So we using second subscript uh, to differentiate this possibility. And again, of course, we don't take all uh, to the infinity. We truncate to some order n. And for example, this T2 tilde function could be expressed uh, through these polynomials and this coefficient which we need to find and this is just for the convenience because uh, equations, both really LFCC and uh, truncated, they all contain this factor. So we right away got rid from this factor. Okay, so, uh, and these polynomials, we did this uh, work with our students. So it could be shown 
that really all of them could be constructed from the second order and third. This C guys right now is monomials and some general monomial could be constructed from the second and third order, whereas they um, look this way. And for example, six order uh, polynomial could be made to two ways, either second order cube, cube uh, to the cube or this third order polynomial squared. And it's of course, uh, we also really by hand using Grand Schmidt, we make them orthonormal for this uh, truncated case or LFCC case. And again, it's much better than, um, as again was mentioned in the previous talk, much better than DLCQ. Okay, so now if we uh, take this life from couple cluster methods uh, auxiliary equation and project them on this basis function expressed through these uh, symmetrical polynomials, we will re obtain really matrix equation whereas uh, what we are looking for is this coefficients a and this delta is again the same shift, it's expressed also could be expressed through this uh, matrices and coefficients. I will show this uh, matrices on the next slide. They are completely, mostly computed by Gauss Legendre uh, quadratures, which is, uh, of course, as you remember, they give you exact answer up to some order. And so really, it's give exact answer for our needs. So this is a mostly um, really overlap of two polynomials. These matrices. All these matrices, all these numbers are finite. There's no divergence. No. No, no, everything fine. Yeah. And now, finally, result. So, again, uh, we find, uh, we will find these uh, coefficients, A, then we will find. Uh, T2, this function T from the operator T, and then we will put to this shift, which is connected physical mass and bare mass, and from here we can find, again, no, of course, we first fix some G, and then we will find this ratio, and then we take another G and find another ratio. Okay, so here really result for the uh, LFCC, Fox space truncation up to the three particles and also sector dependent mass did not talk yet, uh, but results here anyway. And we can see that this the worst is doing exactly this Fox space truncation up to three particles, it's doing the worst. LFCC coming really approximately 1.5 for the G and sector dependent doing better closer to LFCC. So how expensive is this you know, to, to, to perform these calculations? For example, if you were to include one more term into this, uh, the, the five particle term in LFCC, uh, oh, would, it but be, that would it be feasible or is it becoming quickly? L LFCC would be, yeah, because of this uh, uh, nonlinearity, because there is this uh, nonlinear t, t2 squared term, yeah, it's difficult. So this is the reason why we really did not expand LFCC, we, we did a uh, Fox state truncation, except instead of the just to the three, we did up to nine. I will show uh, next. Uh, but yeah, LFCC expensive, but doable. So it's exactly really what would be my summary that because LFCC really we will see later doing views then truncation to, for example, then five, seven, nine state, Fox state truncation. Exactly, because we included only one these T operators, just uh, annihilation of ma one particle, creation of three particles, no really, so just adding two particles. So, um, <coughs> be exactly thinking about adding another term to see how much better it will do. 
So summary for LFCC at this point. So again, it's models relatively simple, uh, but require numerical techniques. In comparison with Fox state truncation shows uh, introduce physical mass for kinetic energy terms without use of sector dependent randomization. And again, it's doable, yeah, particularly uh, using this uh, symmetrical polynomials. And these four states, this low four state truncation up to the three uh, particles definitely are doing worse. Now, what about extended Fox state expansion? So here for the odd sector, we will go up to the ninth state and for the even sector up to the eighth state. Um, so now eigenstate of this fully term Hamiltonian with interaction, of course, would be expressed through this, through this uh, Fox state. And so really every physical state would include um, ideally <laughs> infinite amount of the Fox state. And of course it's normalized. And now uh, just uh, again this eigenvalue, light front eigenvalue problem just yield us this coupled system of equation where we really can see that uh, wave function of the sector M it's connected with itself, also with the uh, two up states and two down states. Which is of course nothing surprising, so it's preserved with either odd sector or even sector. Okay, and for this kind of to do numeric here, we needed uh, polynomials extended to the, not just to the three, bo three body, to, but to the n body. And right now these polynomials, it's again, it's product of these monomials, whereas these powers, of course, summing up, up to n. And it started from the second power, because, of course, first power because of the constraint, it's really equal to one, yeah, because again, domain. Um. Okay, so now using these multivariate polynomials, we again obtain just matrix equation, whereas uh, what we're looking for is this coefficient C, and we have this different mat matrices here, like overlap of non-orthogonal basis function in some given sector, and here we don't do Grand Schmidt because it's produced so terrible a round of error. So we really did this uh, using single value decomposition as usually uh, through this U matrices and diagonal matrix, mat uh, matrix of the eigenvectors of the B and diagonal matrix D. And also in U we only kept column associated with eigenvalues above some positive threshold according to the Wilson. Uh, and of course, we can define some new coefficients and new matrices. So finally, we have uh, this, again, ratio of the physical mass to bare mass squared relative to this uh, critical coupling. And this is, uh, of course, interpolation, again, odd, Oh no, maybe this, for this without sector, no, without sector dependent really odd, we went only up to the seven uh, uh, particle sector and for the even to the eight. And here we also plot in four times odd. Why? Because um, there is no binding state for the even sectors, yeah? So uh, really two odd will give us one even. So this is some sort of like check. And we can see really that even and for odd, they relatively close, close to each other, no, except near critical coupling, which is nothing surprising. So here uh, they intersect mass equals zero in a few um, different points, which is we really taken as an error estimation. And we taking yeah, critical coupling is 2.1 plus minus 
500. How does this result compare with LFCC? LFCC was going to the um, 1.5. Yeah, it was going this way. No, I mean, a little bit higher than 1.5. So this uh, truncation up to the 7 and up to the 8 for odd and even really doing better. Again, we... Why is it doing better? I thought that if, if the LFCC mass is smaller, it means that since it's a variational approach, it means that LFCC is better. Is LFCC a variational approach? No, yeah, LFCC giving you physical mass, yes, for the constituents, but because we including only one T operator, only what this what adding two particles T operator, one to three, um, this is not enough. No, but it's still a variational approach, right? Yes, yeah, you adding all this uh, contribution from the high order. Uh, so what, I, what I'm wondering, my question is the phone. So I, I do a calculation, I see two values for the mass, one from this approach and one from LFCC. Mm -hmm. And I see that LFCC value is smaller. Shouldn't I, uh, conclude, you mean for shouldn't I conclude that I should prefer LFCC wave function because since it's smaller and if the method is variational, whatever is smaller means that I'm doing a better job. Why are you saying that this is better than LFCC? Can you explain? No, I, well, the, LF, the LFCC calculation there uh, breaks down close to the critical coupling. Well, yeah. I don't understand. What does it mean that breaks down? It gives you some answer for the wave function. No, this, there are no solutions to the nonlinear. It's becoming, uh, he, at this point, it's becoming uh, complex. Okay, but let's look at the last point, which is not complex. It's lower than the than the Fox state truncation point. Does yes. it mean that I should prefer the LFCC point, or is there some other problem which I'm not aware of? I would just add more terms to the LFCC. But so why it, should I add more terms? It's already a calculation. It gave you a wave function. If normally, if I'm doing, if there are two different groups which provide two different variational ansatzes, I look at whichever ansatz gives a smaller energy and say, well, that group is doing better, period. You can, of course, yeah. add more terms, so, but even without adding more terms, they are already doing better. So is this correct you, logic for that? If, <laughs> if you jump ahead to the plot that combines light front couple cluster and the... But I uh, think this, without you, combining, you know, this question should have an answer. Another one. There. So, with we have everything, light front, and Fox space truncation, and also sector dependent Fox state truncation. Ah, okay, here's the okay. So, but this is the last point of the light front. No so up to this point, it just, yeah, it's this, it's numerically just becoming complex numbers here. Um, okay, so there's not much difference mm -hmm. up to that point. Mm -hmm. We really, the goal was really to obtain critical coupling value. We, we did not look for the best wave function. We looked for the critical coupling value. So we, we were doing this Fox state truncation, um, higher and higher order, in order to see this convergence. And for example, we can see that um, 5 and 7 almost identical. Uh, and um, sector dependent require really 9. But yeah, I understand, but this whole curve not just the critical coupling, this whole curve is an interesting obser observable. We heard in the talk of Marco Serrone that he can compute using Barrera summation this whole curve. So this whole curve contains a lot of information, not just the critical coupling. So it would be interesting to know eventually not just the critical coupling, but the whole curve. So as, as a general comment. <coughs> uh, <coughs> okay, so in any case, so this light front uh, extended Fox space truncated give us critical coupling at 2.1. Now let's compare for the equal time. Again, we really have to do this uh, rescaling because uh, different people using different for the G. So now it's all in this G bar, 
And we can see that live front guys always has lower critical coupling than equal time. There is a systematic difference. And so this brought us to the idea, no, I mean, we were talking with some patriarch of the light cone, Masai's Burgard, and in um, 1993, he did this work, which connected bare mass of the light front with the equal time uh, bare mass through these uh, really tadpole contributions, if calculated in the uh, equal time. Again, light front, the, there is no vacuum to vacuum con contribution in the light front. But in the equal time, there is this pole contributions, and of course clear white couldn't be in the light front because we go from zero to four particles and then from four particles to zero, which is impossible unless one of the uh, light front momentum would be negative, and we cannot have... Can I ask maybe a stupid question, but I, I'm confused a little bit about the sign. I mean, maybe it's just a question of convention. Why is the plus on this side of the equation and not on the other side of the equation? Because I would have thought that precisely because you're missing this on the light front, that you should be shifting the light front to give you the equal time and not the other way around. Oh. Probably better question to directly to the Messiah who has much higher. Uh, no, there are two minus signs in there, actually. Uh, this <laughs> represents the negative of the tadpole, so I mean, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, maybe sign. there's some. Yeah, yeah. yeah at some, at some point it would be. Because you're missing a piece you know, that's positive. You no, know, these vacuum expectation values are proportional to the tadpole contribution. That's Matthias's work right. to show that correspondence. And that's where there's the minus sign you're worried about. It would be negative. Yeah, it would be negative. So it would add exactly because after adding this stuff to the light front, we will come approximately close to the equal time. Oh, so basically the way that you've defined some convention, this thing is actually negative. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. yes. Of course. Writing. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> we would not present this if it would be. <laughs> but these verbs are calculated in which theory? At equal time? At equal time. Matthias, oh, Matthias Burkert, he did this in equal time and we did this in the light front. And this is some sort of like that they equal. So for the equal time, it's the tadpoles. Uh, for the light front, it's uh, uh, T2, P3, uh, no, from 3 to 1. So some sort of agreement that it would be the same in both equal time and light front. Uh, so equal time. So he was calculating these guys. We were calculating these guys. You know, we together. Uh, so now the question was how to calculate this. Uh, so this is a expectation value, vacuum expectation value of the square of the field in the interaction uh, full theory with the interaction, and this is in the free theory. Um, so in order to calculate this, like in any um, quantum field theory book, we're doing this point splitting. So we're shifting uh, light front time and light front momentum by the epsilon. So we separate from the zero. And we're also inserting uh, using uh, fullness, completeness of the uh, eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. We insert this one here inside. And so now we have to calculate two matrix elements, right one and left one. And of course, um, a joint representation uh, for this operator shifted by this in this adjoint representation. Um, so write uh, this sandwich could be calculated. And of course, left also could be calculated. And for the free state, and by the way, because here we have only um, creation and inhalation uh, operator, we really, because remember, this is the uh, eigenstate of the full Hamiltonian. So each eigenstate, including all uh, infinite number of the Fox state. But it's really for each state, only one particle will contribute, because of course, here only one operator um, 
in the phi field. And for the one particle free state, because really it would be right now free theory, free Hamiltonian, so uh, we really just have this annihilation operator here and on the, uh, for the left creation operator here. So it all could be calculated and this final expression for these two sandwiches. And we, we also can insert in this free guy just to have the same, because again, our free theory really cont each only contained one body state. We now can really come to representation of the modified Bessel functions for this difference. And argument, of course, has to go to zero. So when it's go to zero, it's really uh, have this logarithmic form and my also this earlier factor. And so really this difference equal to this sum, and as you can see, it's negative. Um, where is the really probability of one, bo uh, one body state uh, in every eigenstate? And this is, of course, uh, uh, would be logarithmically divergent if we approach in critical coupling when physical mass goes to zero. And this is how we define this shift. So shift really becomes no, positive, yeah, because we put in this negative sign here. So we either can say that life run is equal time minus some shift, or we can express this as a ratio, or we can express this as a coupling constant for the equal time through the light front coupling constant, or we can express this as a ratio of the physical and bare masses uh, for the equal time through this ratio in the light front, whatever necessary. Uh, just to see that there is a, some convergence, we looked at the relative probabilities for this odd sector. Again, it's only up to seven body, but what we see right away is that uh, each next sector becoming ten, ten times, at least order, uh, smaller than previous one. So there is convergence, definitely. Contribution from the higher sector, they becoming less and less uh, probable. So this is a good point. But the bad scene that near critical coupling, yeah, 2.1, there is no kick, yeah, because it has to be uh, divergence there, because again, physical mass goes to zero. But this guy does not go to zero, unfortunately. So we don't see this kick. Uh, <laughs> growth, we would expect that probability near uh, crit critical coupling, yeah, somewhere here, has to suddenly increase. Particular, no, near critical coupling, a higher Fox state we expect it would be more and more important. But delta should remain finite even at the critical coupling. Yes, but it's unfortunately divert. Uh, yeah. Be because when this goes to zero, this guy has to go to zero. And uh, in our calculation, it did not go to zero, did not go enough to zero. So this is the reason why we started to do sector dependent, hoping that invariant mass, uh, I mean, higher Fox state will not be suppressed uh, by this invariant mass. So, so what is your interpretation of this? I mean, your interpretation is that you just no, this well, you just need more states. Is that is that you need higher particle number states to be able to actually perform this procedure? That is the problem is that you just don't have enough particles. With some sort of we see that in this regular Fox state truncation, because uh, invariant mass still quite high, so this higher Fox state they still suppressed. As they uh, cont contribution of this higher, more excited Fox state has to grow near critical coupling. It has to become more and more important. Mm -hmm. You would expect near critical coupling. And it means that really uh, probability of the one body state has to go to zero. No, I mean, it has to become smaller and smaller near critical coupling. And we don't see this, unfortunately. And so we, but from, Convergence point, at least, this plot of probability, some sort of. Uh, 
encouraging that each higher folks sector becomes uh, less and less probable. And now this is a plot of shift relative to the uh, critical coupling, whereas the points obtain extrapolation on the basis side, and these two curves, this is a linear, and this is a quadratic fit, which is really view constructed only up to g equal, uh, no, I mean, taking data from up to critical coupling equal one. And I will explain why this into the next um, slide, but in any case, shift is relatively good, because when we add this shift to our light front uh, mass uh, critical coupling, we have uh, equal time critical approximately. Uh, so coupling, or do you have an agreement in the full mass curve? Because also the full mass curve has to agree. Yeah, M mass. But this ra ratio of physical mass to equal time mass, uh, we can see that there is a problem arise after g equal one. So this is the reason why we only used instead to go down down, it started to grow. And this is the reason why we used for this shift calculation only point up to g equal one. But before g equals one, you get good agreement. Yes. So this is again the suppression of this higher Fox state. Uh, they don't exhibit themselves as well enough because it's still a uh, probability again for the one body sector still stay enough high. It does not allow them to expand, no, to, to give more probability for the higher Fox state. I don't understand this point with plot because the M squared has to go to zero, and here it goes to point 84, and then starts shooting up. Yes, yes, yeah. So this is we consider this is uh, uh, why, for example, Fox state truncation is a bad thing to do, <laughs> or we have to include much more many state, not just time seven, nine, time or eight, but more. No, but uh, I didn't understand. Before you show the plot, which where the mass was going through zero. Before. Previously, you had a, a plot before you started discussing this mass change. You had a plot which had the mass reaching zero. Uh, yeah, but it was uh, a light front. Light front. Yeah, and now it's equal time. This is using the correction. This is a divided by the bare mass of the light front. So the correction between equal time and light front is diverging once you get to near the critical coupling, and so the connection is breaking down. That's why this swings up here at the larger G. Yeah, so this is a bare mass for equal well, time. Well, this is strange. Yeah, we, we have some unpublished results about how this behaves uh, when you compute the correction in equal time. And there, everything's fine. Right. Uh, yeah, the, there's clearly something wrong in the light front calculation near the critical coupling. That's the bad news in this. <laughs> So, because of this, ah, okay, interpret, uh, yeah, so again, this probability of the one body sector in the really some sort of lower state doesn't go to zero as we wish. So then this expression, which is really sh expression for the shift, will diverge. But if we use uh, points up to g equal 1 to estimate shift, then we would obtain uh, this kind of value. And from the uh, um, Vyacheslav uh, equal time value for the critical coupling, we some sort of relatively close to each other, keeping in mind this error. Again, if we don't use uh, data too close to the critical coupling, which is 2.1. And this is why we try to use this uh, sector dependent scheme in order again to avoid this, because sector dependent in the higher, so if we uh, truncate up to the three particles, you will have only one body and three bodies. So there is a self energy in the one body, but there is no uh, self energy in the three body sector. And because of this, I mean, 
every constituent will have physical mass here. So it means that higher Fock state is not suppressed by this invariant mass. Invariant mass, again, this is really a result of the application of the kinetic energy operator on the state. This is what, what is a so-called invariant mass. So I will not go to the detail of the sector-dependent uh, calculation in any case. You're given physical masses for this higher state, whatever it is, up to three particles, or if it's, we really did this, up to nine particles. And each previous, you know, for that particular truncation, we go from here, no, calculate their masses. Uh, we just use some special scheme from the sector dependent calculation. But in any case, there is this plot is a result with this uh, new scheme, sector dependent scheme, which supposed to give uh, more room for this higher folk states. And again, uh, because convergence is slower here, we have to go for the odd case up to the nine body sector. And really, this is a good thing. I mean, this shows, <laughs> this is what is expected. Um, and again, estimation for the critical coupling about 2.1. They really only see some sort of a little bit different, but 5, 7, and 9 relatively agree with each other. And now this is a combined result, whereas this open symbols, it just folk state truncation from 3 to 7, um, and then uh, sort of closed them. Dark, dark figures, it's uh, this sector dependent scheme up to the 9 uh, truncation, and also LFCC result for this critical coupling. And what is there could be extracted from this? So the sector dependent and standard uh, folk state truncation, they some sort of agree with each other. And critical coupling uh, from both cases coming to approximately 2.1. Sector dependent converge more slowly, and this is really expected. Because we expect that higher folk state should become more important, so it does not converge so quickly. And also, yeah, there is this plot of these probabilities again. We will hope and maybe here we will have this uh, increasing of the probabilities near critical coupling again for the. But at least we see that sector dependent probability is higher, which is again dark figures, higher than the regular space, uh, folk space truncation. <coughs> Except, of course, no, I mean, when we go to the higher state, they're almost the same. But we still don't see this uh, growth of probabilities near critical coupling. And some sort of uh, summary out of this. There is convergence. We definitely see that uh, probability for the higher state is uh, smaller than probability for the lower states. And that also this uh, sector dependent probability they are higher than regular folk state truncation probabilities, which is Again, good indication that they, in the sector-dependent approach, uh, higher folk state becoming more important. But we expected a more rapid increase near critical coupling. We do, did not see this. So this uh, hypothesis, hypothesis that uh, this high invariant mass suppressing this higher folk state, it's really was some sort of incorrect. So we wanted to go uh, to some coherent state approach or to add another term in the LFCC, just hope it will resolve this issue to see this growth really of this higher folk states near critical coupling. Thank you for your attention. Time for questions. So, so I have a question. So is I do not understand. It seems to me you were saying that you were expecting to see that as you are approaching the critical coupling, 
the high occupation numbers would play more and more important role. And and uh, and you don't see it. Is, is, this, yeah. is this a message that I should Yes, should take? yeah. This we consider as a problem, so something wrong here because of this. Because we expect, yeah, critical coupling is exactly you not know, this phase transition, so this higher folk state, they has to play more important role, yeah. so their probability has to be higher. In equal time this happens, if you go yeah. to... So there's something wrong with the uh, light front. Uh, something we don't keep, take into account. One slide we forgot to add is that LFCC does show an increase. Oh. But because the calculation breaks down before you reach the critical coupling, it's not clear. Yeah, this was another po positive point about LFCC. I just did not put the slide. Yeah, that for LFCC, probability would grow, only they started to grow somewhere. Okay, LFCC, we stop some sort of a 1.5, so they grow near this guy. Mm -hmm. So really, we, we were just wanted to add more term to LFCC and see what happened. Because maybe exactly the main point, it's exactly truncation. And LFCC, I mean, truncated, but just truncation of the way, not the truncation in the states, number of states. One, one possible problem with the LFCC calculation is that we start with valence state, which is just the one particle state. And that kind of implies you're keeping that as too important. And you probably need to expand the valence sector to include more states so that there's the one particle state can disappear. <laughs> mm. uh, it can't disappear completely <coughs> from the current onsets because that destroys everything. But if you include a more complicated valence sector, we have more freedom. And then we could, presumably we could reach the critical coupling of the calculation. That's one of the things you want to try. Thanks. More questions from the two or three people in the room who actually did do light front? Perhaps some questions? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then uh, let's postpone questions to lunch and thanks, Sophia, again. <laughs>